Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to show you how to use the IRA automatic exposure control tool in DAS Studio. This is something that my supporter Charles has recently found by accident and he thought, Jay, what's going on? My whole viewport is messed up and I can't bring it back. And I hear you, buddy. We've all been there. Let me show you the tool and how to use it and what it's for and why it's cool, but also why I'm thinking use with caution. So it is, I've got Victoria 9 here who's going to assist me with this demonstration. Hello, Victoria. How's it going? On the viewport here, if I go and switch this over to iRay, you'll notice that at the top here, while we let it cook, you see this is the viewport kind of icon that's changed, but next to it, we see this other little icon, and that's the exposure control tool that I'm talking about. So this is what Charles accidentally clicked, and, and here's, how, here's what it does and, and you know how we can reset it. So I have some lights in here that I want to quickly take out of my scene. So they bring most of the light in here. But if I go and remove them, then I'm left with my HDRI, which is in this case the default HDRI in the render settings on the environment tab here. It's this one, the ruins image. And I've dimmed that down to 0.3. And that means my character looks very drab and dark now because, you know, I have the lights to take care of that. So what the automatic exposure control is able to do is that it lets you, much like on your automatic exposure meter on the camera, let you go and click this icon once, and then you see the icon changes, and then you can move it over a point in your image that you would like to have properly exposed, like properly. <laughs> so like say if we use her face here, I'll go and click that, then some calculations are happening. And then as a result, things have been brightened up a little bit too much in this case. So um, let's try that again. Perhaps the face was not a good point. And literally look at that single pixel when you click it. Uh, so click that, then this icon changes. Let's try the chest here, anything that's too overexposed. So let's go and click that. Calculation happens and Boom, now we have more or less a proper exposure. And when I say proper, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more what that means in a second. Now notice though that the intensity of my HDRI hasn't actually changed. So this is still on 0.3, but now my picture appears to be much lighter. So by what voodoo magic is that happening then? So we'll talk about that in a second. There's a couple of other things I wanted to bring to your attention. When you use it this way, you can click on an object in your viewport, but you can also left click and drag a rectangle around multiple portions of the scene so that IRA can calculate an average of those things. So if I say the bikini here, that's still, that's still very hot because it <laughs> literally, because it uh, reflects the light. If I go and click on the white spot here, then the automatic exposure will look at that white spot and then drag everything else down. But if I go and click this and then left click and drag a rectangle, then everything inside that rectangle will be used for the calculation. So as a result, now I have skin and this in combination. Now the exposure looks a little bit better. This sometimes gets in the way when you use this exposure compensation inside cameras. When you have half of your image is the sky and half of it is something in the front of it, like a house or a person, then the sky and the house or the other thing will be all mixed together and then an average will be calculated. So sometimes if you do things like this, then it can still leave you with bad results because the background is being taken into consideration. And because that has such a massive amount of picture contents, it's often not what you expect. So play around with this as you use this tool. Now, where is this move voodoo magic actually happening here since my HDRI is still the same intensity? Well, it happens on the tone mapping setting. And this is why I kind of advise not to use it or when you use it know what you're doing on tone mapping here we have these two values that are intrinsically linked so the exposure value and the shutter speed they've now both been adjusted if you want to reset what the calculation did there alt click on either of these sliders and that'll bring those back to the default values and as a result now you see what you kind of expected with the 0.3 hdri image here yeah so this is what it does literally it calculates the exposure value you can also set these manually so some artists like using these things in order to bring out effects like stonemason likes using these things i don't like them because they are happening as a post-production step rather than as a render step 
So this is not actually happening. But tone mapping is happening after your picture has been rendered, more like as a post-production step. Think of this a bit like in digital photography, where you have the output of your digital image sensor, but that's not an image. So we can switch tone mapping off. And this is essentially what my, my render looks like, but it doesn't look very good. So we apply a set of things to it that make it turn it more like into an image. And that now looks much better. I prefer leaving all these on default, then getting my lighting right and then if i wanted to add some finishing touches do this as a final step to maybe make small corrections but don't do it as an initial step because otherwise other objects that you may have in your scene like emissive surfaces they may not look like they were intended to look when these values will be overwritten so just careful with that i wanted to show you another option that this automatic exposure control has for which I might set my environment intensity back to one so that we have basically a reset value here. My lights are still not active in this scene. And that is that if you head over to your draw settings tab, there is under the advanced tab up here, you can choose what this tool, how this tool works. It can either look at the exposure or it can look at the white balance or it could look at both these things together. If you don't have the draw settings tab, then, you know, open it up, right click on an empty part, bring draw settings in from here or head over to window panes and then, you know, there's draw settings in here. So if I set this to white balance instead, click the icon and then pick something that is perceived to be gray. Like this ball here has a gray value. Gray or white will both work. Click that and as a result, calculation happens. Not much has changed in our picture because we already had a neutral white balance. But this ball here has kind of a yellowish surface. So if I use it on that, you can see that after the calculation, everything will be blue. And so what the exposure compensation does there is it looks at whatever I'm clicking and says, hey, this needs to appear white no matter what tint currently is in the image. So reverse calculate it and make the light the opposite color so that this ball looks white, which it does now, which is kind of cool. So if you ever have a color cast in your image and you had something like a gray card, the thing that that photographers use to get consistent exposure right, then you could use that. So you could literally use the white balance control for that. And once again, this is applied through tone mapping. So on your render settings tab under tone mapping, you see that the white point has been adjusted. It's now no longer white. It is now essentially almost the color that the ball had. Isn't that cool? It's kind of funky. Let's do this again with this ball here on the other side. So if I go and choose that as a surface and on here, instead of a gray value, I make that kind of deliberately blue or maybe like a blue green. So or maybe like a, like a purpley blue, something like that. So this is what that ball now looks like. If I wanted to uncalculate that, I can just go and click that do that, let iRed do some magic. And uh, this now, more or less, while it's trying to make it look as as neutral as it can and ruining everything else. So usually this is not intended for strong colors, but often you've seen these things that, you know, old video cameras weren't always great with exposure control. So they would show something on the outdoors, extremely yellow on the indoors, really blue, because they just use the wrong color balance. And this is what can be reverse calculated with that. So usually you've got maybe an HDRI that has something like a tone that looks like this. And then you can go and make the image appear more neutral if you wanted to do that. But once again, this can also be done in post-production, of course, but know where that is. If in case you ever have that, it's under tone mapping. That's the white point. So the tool can do one other thing, and that is that it can combine these two things together. So if you set it to both, then it will go and essentially auto-correct everything. So click this, click that, and then it'll make sure this is properly exposed as well as white balance color corrected so that this part of the image looks okay at the expense of literally everything else. Now, when I say properly exposed, what I mean is what it looks like to me, and I have no proof of this at all, what it looks like is that it looks for something similar to a 70% gray card. If you've ever seen photographers use those, they use them usually in conjunction with a light meter. And these gray cards, they have specific values so that they're consistent with whatever color as well as luminosity these, these things have. But they also have a consistent reflectivity value. So if you use them in a room where there's a lot of ambient light, you know that this will only ever reflect 
the particular type of gray that comes out, like say 70%, 18%, something like that. But you also know how much light is being reflected off that surface. So then you can measure the light that comes back and then you can set your exposure um, off that. That's kind of how this works. And this is what this tool is designed for. So double-edged sword, use it if and when you feel it's necessary, play around with it. Default is exposure, but it can also be set to white balance or both. And it is appearing on the tone mapping settings, either as exposure values as well as white point settings. And if you wanted to reset this, then Alt left click on either the exposure value or shutter speed sliders. And for the white point, click into this and set this to white and that'll reset this auto calculation. I hope this was helpful and I hope I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.